Hi, it's Dr. Noel Williams, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Optimal Health Associates, COVID-19 update for April 10th, 2020. Tomorrow is April 11th, 2020, which is my 27-year-old Calvin's birthday, so he'll be 28. He's in LA. Hey, Calvin. I'm saying it now in case I forget tomorrow, <laughs> but I probably won't. But anyway, so we're going to go over a few things. Uh, we have some data from the state that's important. We have a few other things to talk about. So let's talk about the state data first. We're at about 17, 1800 cases. I mean, keeping track of it down to this, the exact number, I don't even care about anymore. It's too many numbers. We have 88 deaths, which was a eight person death rate increase for the day. Um, I figure that's going to start peaking. And this is the key thing. The peak projected day for the surge in Oklahoma is April 21st. That came out of the health department today. The key concept is that's the most important is the surge isn't going to overwhelm anything. It's not going to overwhelm the hospitals. It's not going to over overwhelm anything. We had a great conference call today with the inter -hospital, inter hospital task force for community COVID protection or whatever I named it, whatever. But it is a great group and I'm going to talk about them later, but the data is the 21st is the peak day. So this is what you have to remember. Today's the 10th. All these people are already infected that are going to get super sick by the 21st. They are walking around and don't know they're sick. And we're going to be peaking and staying up then the week after to week and a half after. So the next 20 days is when there's the most infectious people in Oklahoma. It is the most infectious time. So you have to stay home. Or if you go out, like I rode my bike with my wife today, Kim, we wore buffs besides our, and we laughed about it because here we're in buffs and sunglasses and helmets. I mean, if you walked into a post office, oh my God, but now that's the new norm. But that's the norm you have to have. You have to protect yourself if you go outside. You don't want to get infected and you don't want to infect people. So the next 20 days in particular, the next three weeks are the most high risk infectious weeks in Oklahoma and in the rest of the country. So this is when you need to be hyper vigilant. Don't go out, don't do things. If you wanna go outside, I'm not against that because you have to stay sane. Wear a face mask, wear a buff. Buffs are great. Don't come within six meters to eight meters of anybody. I mean, we're if it's- Americans. What? We're oh, Americans. oh, we're Americans, 20 to 25 feet. I think you gotta be extra careful. So really focus on that. And this is why you wanna focus on that. In our hospital call, we reviewed data from within Oklahoma City and from without Oklahoma City. This is the bottom line. There's not going to be a ventilator crisis because if you get on a ventilator and you have COVID-19, you are probably going to die minimally, probably four out of five times, sometimes even higher depending on what group you're talking to. The lowest rate of death that's in the United States right now is about a 40% death rate, but I think the real death rate from listening and talking to these super smart people who are reading and trying and doing everything possible to be on the cutting cutting edge it's probably an 80 to 90 percent death rate so you don't want to get that sick and the best way not to get sick is to stay home and do self-vaccination which is staying at home so you don't get it number two the zinc do the zinc do the zinc the key concept that seems to be coming out is once you get the infection are you going to get mild or you're going to start to super inflame if you start to super inflame it is a disaster okay it's called a cytokine storm it's awful it has to do with interleukin beta and interleukin 6 which are peptides or proteins and it starts like this thunderstorm or torna tornadic activity of inflammation in your body that the very best smartest brilliant humans can't fix with all these expensive medicines. So the best way to avoid that is A, stay home. B, at the first sign of any infection, increase your zinc, which I've gone over, I mean, I think a hundred times now. Stay on your baseline zinc and be on your melatonin because melatonin directly interrupts that cascade. And that's gonna give you your best outcome because if you don't get that sick, it doesn't matter. And then if you do start feeling ill or more sick, then you need to get on Plaquenil. Now, there's going to be a continual date about, uh, debate about Plaquenil. My interpretation of, that, of the data is if you start Plaquenil early, it's going to be phenomenally effective for you. 
if you start it once you're super sick and and then start the z-pack when you're already critically ill it's not going to be as effective so you really want to start again the focus for me is the plaquenil adding the z-pack to the plaquenil can cause heart arrhythmia so i'm still hesitant for that routine use but plaquenil 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 if you have a diagnosis or you're getting sick and you've had a first degree exposure within a few days i think that's very important so that combination of early intervention is going to prevent most of us from entering that scary cascade there's some data was presented both from Children's Hospital in Oklahoma City, where they've had virtually no children, or they've had no children who've come in with cough, cold, congestion, be infected. And one of the group members has connected with um, children, a children's hospital outside of Oklahoma City in California. And out of a, something like 1,100 tested patients uh, that were children, only 10 were positive when they came in with cough, cold, congestion type stuff or were in the hospital. And only two of them were admitted briefly. So again, the kids are, are all right as the saying goes. And it's because they have human growth hormone and they have melatonin is what the theory is. So that's all very important stuff that you need to remember now because this is the pivotal time. We're almost out of the woods in terms of this, of this. We just have to get through the next three weeks to four weeks and then it will abate. And if any of you have watched that um, post I put on, I think it's three brown, one blue on st epidemic statistics, which with the um, animations it's fantastic so the curve is going to go this way we still have to worry but we're on the recovery mode which is important now in order to open up the country there's some stuff out of Johns Hopkins that one of the doctors presented Kersey Winfrey who's just brilliant and um, it goes through four points one um, in order to open up the community and one part of it's for hospitals is we need to have two weeks of declining numbers if we had four weeks of declining numbers, then it's pretty much a done deal, but two weeks is the minimum. Number two, we have to have highly effective testing where we can test as many people in the population as possible. And then the second we have a positive, the Oklahoma State Health Department or the State Health Department has to isolate and essentially quarantine that person. And that's, I think, our gap in Oklahoma. The Oklahoma State Health Department has not been, and again, it's, it's just an observation because who would know that we would have to have a health department to handle something like this? They're not, no, they weren't set up for it. But the Oklahoma State Health Department isn't still set up to follow these quarantine people and do something about it. And so that's kind of a problem. But in a perfect world, they would contact that, the infected person and all the other associated people they've seen in the last few days and get them isolated for a week or two. But that would be very helpful. And then for opening, opening up hospitals, the final thing is we just have to get all the staffs back up to snuff and, because people have been um, furloughed or laid off or, or had some temporary uh, distancing from the hospital. So we want to get those people back in place before we start doing elective surgeries, but I don't think that's going to be really hard. And, and elective surgeries doesn't mean plastic surgery. It means, oh, I have a breast cancer that's only mildly invasive or moderately invasive. I mean, there's literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of Oklahomans who have either cancer diagnoses, um, bad gallbladders, terrible knees, terrible hips, they're in total pain, they have back disease, they have all kinds of stuff, and they're just miserable right now because they can't have surgeries. And so the, rather than elective, I think we'd say important but non-emergency, <laughs> okay? These people need their surgeries. I mean, if you have cancer and you're sitting there waiting like this, knowing you're, it's growing in you, that's a son of a gun. And so we want to get those people taken care of as fast as we can. So we need to get the hospitals open to take. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to be working on all that stuff. So please do your best and be safe over the next three weeks. I'll, of course, make some other posts. Oh, one thing about the COVID binding to the uh, hemoglobin, that issue, if the COVID virus, if you read the post I put out today that was written, binds to the hemoglobin and dissociates the iron and then makes the red blood cell not able to carry the oxygen, that problem is actually counterintuitively in people with higher red blood cell counts. It's not in people with iron deficiency anemia. It's a predominant, I mean, that issue really lights up with men, lights up with, I'm sorry, men with apnea, 
and because when you don't breathe at night and you go, <gasps> you have to build up your red blood cell count. Um, and so you have more. So it's more of an issue, gonna be more of an issue with people with lots of blood than people with lower blood counts. It's completely counterintuitive. Um, wasn't what I was expecting in reading the paper, but that's what it turned out to be. So that's some preliminary data too. So we have to still go with the flow on that. Um, so that's enough of that. So anyway, have a wonderful night. I'll update you probably tomorrow, either by, well, one way or another, um, but have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, bye.